We're in a 2009 Toyota RAV4. I'm uh, going to put a plug and play remote starter in. First thing you want to do is take a Phillips screwdriver. Take the two Phillips out underneath the dash. Remove the lower dash panel. Pulling straight out. Wiggle it a little. Don't want to break any clips. Uh, it will expose a little support bar. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take out ground screw. Here we're going to ground it. Okay, we're going to pop the steering column. A little pressure on the sides. Up. And then the keyhole. Go back and forth action. We should be able to get it to pop. If it's stubborn, you can use a plastic tool. A little pressure on it. And she should release right off. I'm going to drop the bottom out to get to the ignition plug. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the ignition switch. This RAV4 does not have anti theft, it has no transponder at all. We're in our 2009 Toyota RAV4. Um, doing a remote starter, we're doing the Crime Stopper RS4 G4. Basically, the job is done. I'm going to show you all the connections. This is a 2009 RAV4, and it does not have a transponder or any type of anti theft. The vehicle does have power locks, and we're going to control them. But if you have a, a key like this that starts the vehicle, you do not have a transponder in your vehicle. There's a lot of 09s out there that do not have a transponder. There's also a lot that do. So if you don't have a transponder, this video will apply. If you do have a transponder, you will have to add the appropriate bypass module, either from iDatalink or Fortin. Do not use, I do not use DEI products, so I don't know what's available from them. For my data link, I would use an ADS TB module, and uh, I do not know what's available from Fortin. I know they have several, several different options. If you go to their website, ifar.ca, you can see what module that you would need. Um, okay, this job is done. I like to get everything up in the column on this vehicle. Uh, reason being, it's all there. It's easy to access. You don't have to look around for for wires. So I'll just go over some of the connections. Constant power, red from the Crime Stopper is going to go to the dark blue larger gauge wire at the ignition harness. Your primary ignition or your pink wire from the Crime Stopper is going to go to the larger gauge white wire, which is ignition one. The starter wire, the main starter wire is yellow. Um, on the vehicle and it's brown on the Crime Stopper. So your brown Crime Stopper starter wire is going to go to the yellow larger gauge wire on the vehicle. There is a second starter that we've programmed this uh, pink with a white stripe from the Crime Stopper to be a second starter wire and we've connected it to the white wire on the Toyota RAV4. Our ignition 2 is the pink wire at the ignition harness and uh, we've connected our gray Crime Stopper wire to this pink wire. Horn wire comes out of the clock timer on the black plug here. Don't go near the yellow plug or any wires on there. Those are airbag wires and we don't want to we don't want to mess around with them. The horn wire from the Crime Stopper which is the solid yellow wire goes to the light green wire coming out of the clock timer on the vehicle. Parking lights white at the plug third pin in and uh, the parking lights are negative on this vehicle so you want to make sure that your polarity select is negative anything that I send out I already know this so I would set it up for this um, we've routed our wires down 
the main harness and we've kept in mind that the column has to go back on this vehicle so when we zip it up we're going to do this and we're going to pull it up right here and we're going to make sure that everything fits comfortably under the column our brake signal wire comes down and we're catching the brake up here in this uh, plug right here it's solid dark blue you can see it with the light on Trying to get a good picture of it. Um, this vehicle also has tachometer available at the diagnostic plug. The wire is very small, so we've done a strip and wrap on that, and I'm going to solder that. It's usually the wire that's all by itself on the, on the corner of the plug. Um, in this case, it's a gray wire, and we we'll connect our Crime Stopper red with a white stripe to the solid gray wire at the diagnostic plug on the end pin. Lock and unlock on this vehicle are easily gotten where the wires come through the door harness. We have the solid blues being our lock wire, pink being our unlock wire, and uh, we've got this set up to do priority door locks, which means we do not have double pull set. Some of the Crime Stopper options that you would want to set are option three selection three if you want a double pulse unlock that's where all the doors unlock from the first press of the remote button and then you would want to do option four selection three to make this pink with a white stripe a second starter wire okay to lock the vehicle we're going to press the close lock button all the doors will lock come back to the vehicle if we want the driver's door to unlock only we press the unlock once we want the rest to unlock we push the button again and we unlock the rest of the doors. Now with the Crime Stopper, the first press will activate the locks silently. Second press will give a one honk confirmation chirp. When you unlock the vehicle, if you push it once, it'll unlock the driver's door. Twice will unlock all the doors and give a two honk confirmation. To start the vehicle, we'll press the button with the key on it and hold it for three seconds. Parking lights will come on, the ignitions will initialize, the vehicle will crank start and run for 20 minutes. Now we verified that the heat is working. So we have a, a connection on our ignition too. Um, we can also shut the vehicle off. And we have a panic feature. We hold the lock button down and keep it down and it will activate the panic which is the horn honking. Pressing the lock button again will shut off the panic feature. So again, I'll just go over all the connections. Have our ignition connections. Run it down. Run our lock wires. Over, lock and unlock. Brake wire. And we've run our tachometer wire around the front and down to get to the diagnostic plug here. Um, you can do this vehicle tackless, but since a lot of these late model Toyotas have tack at the diagnostic plug, it's an easy connection and it will make the remote starter more reliable. The only two things we have left are to run the antenna wire and to secure the unit and put everything up.